Hello everyone, so I'm CA here. So based on the title of this video, I'm predicting I'm going to get three types of people. The first type of people are going to think that based on the title, this video is clearly clickbait. It's just a catchy title, something that people are looking for, a quick fix, they want to check in, I'm just trying to trick you. The second group of people are going to think this is much too good to be true. Let me check what this is. I'm sure it's a scam. I'm sure this person is trying to sell me something. The third group of people are, are going to be the people that are going to say, well, I know what the answer is. It's so obvious. The answer is practice. What's the guaranteed way to get better? Practice. You would think that that is the answer, but the truth is this, and people may not tell you this. Practice doesn't always make you better, particularly if you're not practicing the correct thing or if you're not practicing the correct thing the correct way. For example, if I play my major scale, let's pick a random note here, and I practice my random uh, major scale, now, I made mistakes in that major scale, intentional mistakes, obviously, but if I continue to practice like that, I said, oh, you know, I messed up, but it's fine. And I just keep practicing and getting better and better at that mistake. Eventually, that's going to become a habit. And now even though I've been practicing it, I've been practicing the wrong thing. And I'm not going to get better. Uh, practice is important. Practice absolutely makes us better. But only if you're practicing the right thing. Uh, if you're practicing daily, it will help you get better quicker. Uh, if you're practicing the correct thing and multiple of the correct things, you'll get better uh, and you will see leaps and bounds. Eventually, you're going to plateau a bit and then you're going to have to push past that and find new ways to invent yourself. But none of that is what I'm talking about today. Practice is not the answer I have for this. The guaranteed way that I found, and I believe it will hold true for any other musician on any instrument, even if it's not the bass, is this. Playing with better musicians. You're like, what? What? Listen to me. If you play with musicians who are better than yourself, you will guarantee get better. I'm going to give you some examples, some demonstrations in a second, but just trust me, you will guarantee get better. Uh, if I can find some pictures of what I'm going to talk about, I'll put them up um, a little bit here for what I'm talking about. When you're building a house or you're, or you're building anything of great height or need to repair things of great height, they have these things called scaffolding, right? And the scaffolding is able to get higher than what you're currently building uh, or just as high as whatever you're building. So for us as, as musicians, we have goals that are higher than us. We may want to sound better than we do now. All of that stuff is higher than us. And what the, the great musicians around us do is they act as scaffolding. They're higher than we are. They're at the points we would like to be. Eventually, our, our building that we're building is going to be as tall as the scaffolding, if not taller than the scaffolding. Uh, so they're where we want to be. And we've got to continue to build ourselves up. But what that scaffolding does is it allows the workers to get into a position or into a place to build up what's lower to a higher point until eventually they get to the architect's goal or to the, the completion of whatever the blueprint was for that house or for that building. So we will use those other musicians around us to help us build up to where we were. Hopefully that's a good analogy and you can see what I'm saying there. So you're like, okay, whatever the case is, you may still not believe me. So I'm going to give you some examples here. All right. Hopefully I don't get too carried away with these examples. Uh, I was jamming a little bit before we started. So I'm going to play uh, a song. I know I'm not going to get hit with a copyright. I've been using it in a lot of videos and probably a song you've heard play in your own church. How great is um, our God? I've been playing it in a lot of different videos. And then this first example, what I'm going to do here is, pardon me as I pull this up. What I'm going to do is I am going to play as a beginner, right? And we're going to assume everyone in the band is a complete beginner. Please don't start. Okay. <laughs> We're going to come. We're going to pretend it's a three piece band, me, a drummer and a keyboardist. We're going to pretend everyone is a complete beginner and playing in a complete beginner way. Now, these examples are extreme. So just bear with me. You're like, no one will ever play this straight. No one will ever play this basic. That may be true. This this is for um, purposes of example. OK, here we go.
absolute beginners. First day on the job. All right, now you may say, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and there isn't. That, that's the way the song is written. That's completely fine. Uh, but at some point, we're going to want to progress from that. We're going to want to move from that. The problem is, if I'm playing with other musicians, we're all beginners in that example, right? My keyboardist is at the same level as me. My drummer is at the same level as me. What happens is there's nothing I can pull from musically. Uh, anything outside of that circle, none of us is feeding each other with, with a little bit more like, okay, here's an idea you may not have thought of. And what great musicians do is they may play things that get into your head and you're like, oh, I could use this. Oh, I could do that. Um, for instance, in this next example we're going to do, we're going to upgrade our keyboardist. All right, Our keyboardist is going to be uh, better than everyone in the band. And we're going to see how that affects me as a musician who's trying to get better. All right. So now um, the keyboardist is the best person in the band in this next example. And then we'll talk a little bit about how I was able and what I was able to get from that. Okay. That was a movement we didn't hear the first time, okay. All right. So I'm playing the first time through with my, my new band, and I just heard something I've never heard before. Let me see if I can lock into it this time. The keyboards might hear it and say, let's try it again. We're gonna do a seven, three, six here. Oh, I didn't know that that was a possibility. We weren't getting fed that before. So now I got some new vocabulary. Now, I know from playing bass and practicing that I can use a chromatic there. So let's try that same band pass with a chromatic. Hmm. So I'm already starting to sound better. Just playing with a, a different set of musicians. I'm gonna stop it here a different set of musicians who are better than me. They threw out an idea. This keyboardist, the first pass, we didn't know it was coming. The next time he said, okay, you know, this, this would be a good band hit. And he tells the band, seven, three, six. All right, now I know. So when I'm going from my one to my six, I threw in a seven, three, six. Okay, that's something where before the first band didn't know that. that no one was at a level where that was something that they, they could think of. And then I used my, my knowledge of uh, bass, and I took some of my knowledge that was unlocked because of something that another musician around me pulled out of me. All right. Now let's um, look back at this example. I'm going to play this example again. Let's see what else we can pull out of it. About to start over right here. All right. He's doing okay. Nice little line there. Something different than just that those root chords we were hearing before. All right, he's coloring these these numbers a little bit more with some things. Okay. He did it again. All right, so now this time, let's try to, to do something with that. Nice. Okay. So let's stop there. So now we're seeing how I'm getting better. I've gotten better because of another musician in the band. Now, uh, there are several ways that you could learn when you're playing with uh, other band members that are better than you. And, and I'm going to say a few things on it. OK, so number one, the band member who's better than you or other people in the band who are better than you are going to at some point realize you're not catching on to maybe some of these things that they want to do as band hits. So they'll say to you, hey, 736, or they'll say, um, not in the specific key I'm in, but let's say CFG or something like that, right, that they want you to play um, because they're realizing you may not be advanced enough to pick up on it. So that's one way you can learn. Another way you might be able to learn is and something I do. Uh, let's say a song like that ended. Dun, 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 how great. Oh God. I might be like, you know what? I heard what they did, and they're holding the note. They're just holding the one right now. I might try to figure out what they did. Oh, that was a... Okay, so it sounded like he did. 
you know, and I'll just like try to sneak it in while they're holding that note or while there's dead silence. Um, if we're not recording or streaming uh, and I can hear it, I'll try to figure out after everyone's done playing or it's a little bit quieter. What was it that he did and figure it out there right there on the spot with uh, musicians? If you're in a, se a shed um, arena, it it'll be a little easier to maybe pick that out as they're going around. I might still be trying to figure out what they're doing while they're at different parts of the song because I don't have to be on on it like I would in church. Uh, the other thing you might do is you're going to remember that if you heard something that you've never heard before in a setting, you're going to say, oh, I'll remember that for later. You'll go home and you'll figure it out. And if you don't figure it out or don't remember it, you can go back to your church recording um, or hopefully you have a recorder with you or, or something. And you're going to go back and try to learn what you heard because you'd never heard that before. You see, so and that's how you start to build your vocabulary. That's how you start to figure out different things. That's how you can get better. Now, there's a difference in playing it versus hearing it. You can go out and hear great musicians. Go out and listen to bands like Snarky Puppy or, you know, John P. Key's band or um uh, Corey Henry and the the Funk Apostles. You can go out and listen to these people, but it's different when you're the player who's who's insufficient or feels insufficient with these other great musicians and you're actually playing, you can suck it up a little bit quicker what they're doing. I'm going to give you one more example uh, and then I'll let you let y'all go here. All right. Now we're going to upgrade our band to where our drummer and our keyboardist are better than we are on bass. And let's see what let's see what impact it can have on me as a bass player. All right. So we've gathered all of the knowledge from previously from our keyboardists. Now let's see if the bass player can give uh, the drummer can give us anything to work on as uh, a bass player. Right, let's see what we're doing here. Okay. Again, extreme examples. All right. Someone's probably not going to play this busy in church. Although you never know. All right. So let, let's see what we can do with it. <clears throat> So you see, I'm, just, I'm pulling from that, let me play it. I'm pulling from that, that 16th note feel. And a 2E and a 1D and a 2E and a 1E and a 2E and a 2E and a 2E and a 2E. And I'm filling in using my fifths and octaves. Uh, so I'm just, I'm mimicking that feel with fifths and octaves to, cause now the, the drummer is giving me something to pull from. So when I go back to our first example now, now that you've heard all of these examples, we go back to these, these first musicians and we're like, there was nothing here. There was nothing we could pull from in here. All I could do was lock in with the, the, the drummer. Keyboardist is giving me nothing. Drummer is giving me nothing but a kick drum to lock onto. All right, as compared to our very last track. So you can see how playing with better musicians, believe me, it will guarantee that you get better because someone's going to do something that you're like, I didn't think of that. They're going to play a harmony differently, a medley differently, a rhythm differently than you heard it. And if you're listening, uh, it could be very easy to be intimidated when playing with better musicians and you'll become so worried about getting the right notes that you'll miss the stuff that's going on around you. Use your ears listen to what's being played and try your best to imitate whatever you can. You don't have to try to pick out all of it. It will be impossible. You'll get overwhelmed, uh, but, but try and, and lock in wherever you can. And that's for any instrument, whether you're a keyboardist, whether you're a guitarist, whether you're a drummer, listen to other people because they're, they're good. Musicians are always talking to each other. Music is, is a language. We communicate. I do something, you do something. I do something, you do something. If you listen to some of these great bands, you'll hear somebody will do something and someone will follow the shot like, oh, da 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 da, da. No different than a preacher preaching and then the organist following them. Uh, I know he's all right. It, 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 you know, it's like a call and response type of thing. So that is my recommendations for you. 
if we ever get past this COVID thing, y'all, go out, try to play with as great musicians as you can. People that are worlds better than you if they'll let you play with them. Uh, go out and play at Sheds. Uh, I know when I was coming up and still even now sometimes I get shy at Sheds. Like, well, I don't feel like I'm at your, your level or your level. Jump in. Jump in with both feet because I promise you it will help you get better right there because it's on the spot training. And that tension that you feel of, like, I, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to be the weak link will push you. Trust me, it will propel the stuff that you know. Uh, things you did know that were in there that, that is music will just start to ooze out of you. I'm Soul MCA. Hope you enjoyed this video. You take care. God bless.